Hello everyone, this video is a little bit all over the place. I've got footage on my phone, on my GoPro, on whatever other camera I've decided to use over the last few months, so it's been a long one. Um, I've assembled my speed wiener in the Mini, I've sort of done the wiring loom and I've got one bit left to do, so let me show you something. Yesterday I've modified my plenum chamber, put this bit of pipe on and put a manual cable operated throttle body on it. Um, the wiring's all kind of needs a little bit of finishing. So this wire here, that is for my um, AEM wideband sensor and controller thing. So I think I need a uh, switched positive there, negative, sensor ground, and then one of these wires, I think it's the blue one, needs to feed into the ECU. So I've got all that to work out. I'm going to do that today. And then I think I'm in a position to think about firing up. So that'll be right at the end of the video. Um, Stick around for this one, see how things progress. I'll do a bit of voiceover and talk about what I've done, but yeah, the Speed Wiener, the Mini's nearly ready to run on a Speed Wiener. Speed is a pretty handy little thing. It's an ECU that's kind of a DIY aftermarket solution. So you can go and buy a Howtech or something expensive like that, or you can get a DIY EFI solution like this so you kind of you, you can buy a speed reno either in a kit and you assemble it all yourself or an assembled board and uh, wire it all yourself so I bought this one assembled I did buy a kit initially um, the assembly didn't really go to plan as well as I thought it would so I ended up buying another assembled board but I've had to add a little ULN chip on and uh, a few other bits and pieces so the most important part is adding all these wires to the uh, plugs a little bit tricky, um, but when I do it, that little time lapse you've just watched was me putting all these little wires on this plug. That's 18 little wires on one plug. I've got to mount this. Yeah, I've, got to focus on this. I've got to mount this in my uh, enclosure. It's going to go in the top, I think, and then all these little tails go onto the little uh, plug that connects onto there on the board so um, I'm going to get on with doing the other one and uh, I'll catch up with you so I've got the uh, wiring loop all made up that's the speed we know in its little box so I've connected this wiring loom to these two plugs here it goes into the main plug there and then the power into those two connectors there the idea is oh, these will plug in like that and this will be the car side wiring so I've got, I need to get a, uh, there's a space there for a stepper motor driver because this is the throttle body that I'm going to use and this is a stepper motor type idle control valve so I do need to uh, get a driver for that and it uh, sort of fits in there so that's something I still need to do and uh, understand how that wires up. Um, for now though I need to take the ECU wiring and all that off the car. I need to take the throttle body off, pedal out from inside the car. There's a whole lot of wire needs to come out of the car now. of wire and spaghetti all over the floor um, so I fetched out all the wiring and took the throttle body off I've tidied up a bit of the wiring at the back of the bulkhead there and then I've stripped out my injector wiring my oxygen sensor wiring comes into here which is these three left to connect I've got my coil pack that's a earth and an ignition live there and then these are the four triggers I need some slightly thicker gauge wire than what I've got to put those through to where the ECU is going to sit inside the car. Got my crank sensor plugged in down there, and then that wire comes up. There's that wire gone here. So, this crank sensor, I've not modified the wire for this. It's a shielded twisted pair. It's not quite long enough for what I need, so I'm going to have to see if I can find another, uh, uh, see if I can buy a twin core shielded wire. So, if not, I'll just have to get a twisted pair. Um, Got my, move the keyboard out of the way. I've 
I've got my cam cam sensor plugged in here and that wiring runs through that loom. This is my coolant temperature, which the plug's just dangling down at the moment, plugged in behind there. Um, so yeah, um, I can't connect the knock sensor uh, because there's no knock support on Speed Reno, unfortunately. I've still got intake air temperature sensor to put together. So inside the car, these are all the wires. Let's zoom out of it. So these are all the uh, these are all the wires that have come through from that bulkhead. Um, one moment. There are the wires coming through the bulkhead um, that will go to the ECU main plug. I've got a main power to the coil and oxygen sensor and things like that there. Um, that is fuel pump relay. So when I turn the ignition on, that relay goes live and puts power out there to the coil and one on that. I intend to go to the ECU. When I ground this, this wire, the fuel pump runs. So that will go into the ECU to uh, control the fuel pump. So it's, uh, it's coming along slowly. There's a lot of work to do. I still need to get a plug for that and a driver. Um, and I need to look at my intake air temperature sensor wiring. I was sat last night editing this video and realised I need to give you all a bit of an update because otherwise the next bit won't make a lot of sense. So I think the last bit you saw, I was talking about the wiring inside the car. So as you can see, these plugs are all populated now and connected to the speed reno. All of these wires come from under the bonnet. They're things like fuel pump relays dangling down, uh, ignition relay, all sorts of things. I've got my AEM wideband there. Um, so that should light up when I turn the ignition on. Yep, there we go. And you can hear the fuel pump run. I don't know if you can hear it. So everything like that works. So the position I was in the other day was one where I wanted to start the engine. So I was cranking and cranking and trying to faffing about with the, um, with the uh, coil pack and signals and I was getting no spark. So I later found out I'd made an incorrect assumption. This coil pack is not actually a smart coil. I thought it was because it's got a, it's got a positive, negative and four triggers. However, it is not a smart coil, it's a dumb coil. So I've bought this here. So that is a um, coil driver. So that goes between the ECU and the coil triggers. So this side you've got the four ECU inputs and an earth, and then this side of the four outputs to the coil. Once I've wired that in with this little bag of pins, we should be able to start the engine. So I'm going to get this fitted and wired in and see how we go. Now, where did we get to? I did make this little bit before, but uh, so I think last time, last time I spoke, we were going to rewire the injectors, were we? Can't remember. Anyway, I've rewired the injectors. I'd wired them up one, two, three, four, as the outputs from the ECU is one, two, three, four, but you're supposed to wire them in the firing order. Same with the coil triggers. So I've wired them one, three, four, two, both the injectors and coil triggers. I can't remember if I showed you this, I've put a coil driver in. I had to do a little bit of testing to figure that out. I've set my, my uh, trigger angle. I set the cranking time into zero degrees, uh, pulled the fuel pump relay out and cranked it and lined up the, um, kept adjusting the trigger angle until the timing mark lined up with the mark on the uh, cover at top dead center. I confirmed top dead center by poking something down the number one spark plug hole and I put my timing light on uh, the number one trigger wire down here for the uh, coil. So you don't need the spark plug leads, you can put it on if you've got a coil on plug, you can just put your timing light on the uh, trigger wire and it works just the same. So what have I got to do now? I'll just show you something.
So, as you can see, it was idling very fast, but it runs on the speed we know. It was showing 13 and a half um, um, fuel air fuel ratio, which is quite good. So it runs. Now I found, it's obviously idling very fast, I've backed off the idle adjustment screw, so throttle blade is shut almost fully. But I found some air leaks down, sort of down here because of my poor welding. So I'm gonna take this all off again, go over my welds, check this join here, make sure everything's sealed and put it all back together again. And then once I've done that, uh, I need to wire in my uh, cooling fan trigger so that it will keep it cool because we don't want it going too hot, do we? Um, what else do I need to do? Cooling fan trigger, uh, patch up those holes. I want to put an output for a kind of a clutch switch, which I might just put on a button and see if I can mount it on the steering wheel just for launch control. Um, yeah, things are, things are looking up. So once I've calmed the idle speed down to a sensible amount, um, I can start to look at taking it out on the road and tuning. So I've not got no idea about tuning. It's something I'm going to have to learn and have a play with. But um, I've had a little bit of a play around with the fuel tables and the, and the timing table so far. Looks straightforward enough. I've just got to uh, I've got to use data logs and uh, and whatnot to uh, to get that right. So loads of wiring tidying up to do. A couple of extra wires to add in. Like I say, the cooling fan and the clutch switch. And then we're uh, we're just about ready to box it all up and uh, look forward to the track again. So my next job, I think it's going to be next weekend now before I have the chance to patch up that. Pipe. The garage is in a bit of a mess. I've got stuff out all over the place, and uh, and it's Mother's Day today, so probably shouldn't even be in the garage. So uh, thanks for watching this one. It's been a long one. I've been working on this video since about October, I think. So it's taken a little bit of time, but the mini now runs on Speedway now. I've put more effort in the last few weeks than I have the whole of the winter up until now. So I think there's a three or four weeks till I'm next at the track. So I've got my work cut out. So. There'll be another video soon once we get out on the road driving. Um, I've got a hole to split floor, split uh, football, what do you call it? Bulkhead, uh, tow board is split with a subframe mount, so I've got to weld that up uh, before I go out to the track again. And uh, I've got a bit of playing around with tyres to do. So thanks for watching this one, and I shall see you again soon.